Hello, Connecticut, and welcome to the Paid Leave Podcast. The title uh, basically says it all. I'm Nancy Barrow, and I will be delving into this new state program and how it can help you and your family. This podcast will give you information you should know about Connecticut Paid Leave and maybe just a little bit more. Connecticut Paid Leave brings peace of mind to your home, family, and workplace. Welcome to the Paid Leave Podcast. May is Maternal Mental Health Month, and during the month, the focus is on increasing awareness about mental health and the well-being of mothers during pregnancy and the time shortly after birth. About 10 to 15 percent of women experience postpartum depression, also known as PPD. Mental health issues are the most common complication of childbirth. Regardless of the way you're starting or expanding your family, you may be eligible for up to 12 weeks of income replacement under Connecticut Paid Leave. Postpartum depression may be considered a serious health condition. Doulas provide support and education about pre- and postpartum depression. And joining me to talk about Maternal Mental Health Month is Shannon Knox and Brittany Needham. Both are holistic, full-spectrum doulas and founders of Golden Radiance Village. And welcome to the Paid Leave Podcast, Brittany and Shannon. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Can you tell me maybe what a doula is? Let's start at the beginning. So doulas are um, non-medical um, professionals who support um, birthing expecting parents, um, you know, postpartum parents um, throughout their maternal health or par- or paternal health uh, journey. Um, they provide support in uh, mental health, uh, physical, emotional uh, financial, social, um, spiritual um, support throughout pregnancy, labor, and for postpartum. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't know, Shane, if you want to add anything um, to a little bit more about what doulas do, but yeah. Um, I think you spoke like deeply mm-hmm. about the birth birth doulas, but there's so there's like a wide spectrum of doula work. So um, you know, preconception, bereavement, it's like all of the ranges we support with all those things during all those major life transitions. We look at the whole person, not just yeah. like in their whole environmental experience yeah. and take all those things into consideration as we're providing care. Tell me a little bit about Golden Radiance Village and how you both created this doula business together. So I am a full spectrum doula and um, in 2020, I became certified in 2019. Um, and during 2020, um, you know, when the pandemic happened, um, it really shifted a lot of the ways um, that, you know, doulas could show up and support. Um, so during my journey of, you know, wanting to get the word out, um, you know, and let people know who I was as a doula, I was taking a lot of time um, and just marketing and, you know, bringing more awareness to what doulas are, what we do. Um, And in that time, um, Shannon had a friend that referred her to me. Sophia, Uh, shout out to to Sophia. And um, I supported Shannon um, during her labor in 2020. And um, from there, we kind of just um, continued our relationship. Um, You know, we just continued um, learning each other. Um, In that time, I was learning um, I focus a lot more on the birth side of being a doula, but when, um, you know, after Shannon had her son, that's really where um, a bigger awareness to the support in the postpartum really became like, just pri- like just important. And, um, you know, Shannon could definitely speak on this, but in Shannon's experience being a doula and then being a mom, she really saw that difference and um, noticing how postpartum is kind of just, not the focus it's not really and a lot of moms are struggling and um you know so that's kind of like how we kept our relationship um and i am the radiant love doula and shannon is the golden womb doula so we decided to combine our names and we created golden radiance village um you know where we um really come work together to ensure the holistic well-being of melanated families throughout their entire parenting journey so that must have been really a lot of pressure let me just let me just say that Brett, <laughs> for uh, being a doula also oh, yeah. being a doula for a doula doula mm-hmm. yes <laughs> yep <laughs> So, so I never thought about that. Yeah. yeah. So was there pressure for you? Like, did you feel like, oh, I, I wonder if she's like looking at me and like making all the check marks. Like she, she did that. Check. <laughs> she did this. Check. That is funny. I mean, I get, I'm thinking back on it. No, it. I, I maybe there was a little bit of pressure, but at the same time, it's like 
it was it was just so it was just it was easy our rela- it was just authentic um mm-hmm. you know when we had our meetings you know we just talked and we just held space i held space space for shannon um and then during her labor like even as we were working together like at a certain point we just became in sync and shannon would either have a look on her face or she would do a tap and i just knew like Only- there were a million people there. Only person I saw was Brittany. I was like, Brittany! <laughs> Brittany! <laughs> Shannon, tell me so, about the experience for you. Yeah, um, for the labor or just all together? For all together, yeah. For for working with, with Brittany. Of course, yes. Um, I'm so, I feel like, okay, as a doula, I, I always reflected and see, saw it this way. Like, I helped a lot of moms. I supported a lot of moms. And for free. Like I did a lot of volunteer work, right? I feel like Brittany was the gift that was sent to me during that really mm. tough time in my life. Brittany had my back, like in ways I don't even know if I, I even dove into so, some of the ways that you supported me through some of the hardest parts. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just really appreciate her. Her, she came through with that birth ball. She came through prepared, counter pressure <laughs> on point, affirmations on point when I was ready to give up. Cause as a doula, you see the mom say, I can't do this. I didn't think I was going to be a, I can't do this mom. And I sure was <laughs> like, you can, if you're going to. Yes. And it, Brittany was an amazing doula for me. I, I have nothing but gratitude and becoming business partners, an amazing business partner. And I'm just so happy to be supporting families with her. It, I'm so glad I got to meet you too, because I think it's a really special relationship. But d- tell me a, a little bit, Shannon, about the complications that you had during your pregnancy. Yeah, that that was a really hard time because um, one, I was in a relationship with, with a domestic violence it was bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that caused a lot of issues um, in my and then within my wellness within the pregnancy, I had anemia, I had the digestional diabetes, all these things that like, I went from perfect health athlete to pregnancy kicked my butt. Like (laughs) it was another (laughs) life experience. And so in labor, I I think I labored for three days. It was a journey. And Brittany was there the whole time, like for real. Um, But I stalled because when you're laboring, all your trauma and drama shows up Mm. in your your mental, like your psyche. So Mm -hmm. Um, it, it was hard for me to get over that. And I stalled, yeah, I stalled out the three days took me out. (laughs) Wow. That's, um, I'm sorry about the whole domestic violence. I, I just want to state Connecticut paid leave does help with that, with family violence. We give up to 12 days of income replacement so you can get the help that you need, whether it's mental health or whether you have to go to a doctor for injuries that you had or whether you need social services or whether you need to go to court. So Connecticut Paid Leave does cover that, which I think is so important that we have that available to women. I know that you kind of specialize in that, too, as well. So if you do run across people, please let them know that Connecticut Paid Leave is here for them and can help them with at least 12 Mm -hmm. days of income replacement, which can be the difference between getting out and and not getting out. Yes, Mm -hmm. that's so true. I wish this was existed when I it was my time. Right. (laughs) Any and everybody I know that has this experience. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you, because I I do think that's an important factor you know, that we we can do that as well. So what is the best part of your job being a doula? Just seeing or being there through that journey and being um, just seeing, you know, them start from point A and then, you know, get to point B. Because one thing, you know, as me as a um, I'm really passionate about education. I'm really passionate about, um, I believe that to be informed is to be fore- forewarned. And when you do have that information, it gives you that that knowledge. Um, it gives you a power back. And I think when I see that in moms, uh, because, you know, like Shannon said, you know, you're on one side and then you get in that space and you would never think that that would be there. And you have those thoughts and, you know, that internal turmoil, all those things coming up reminding moms of that inner power that is in them and just affirming them and holding that space for them. I think that's my favorite part of just being, um, yeah, being a doula and seeing them have that realization. Maybe it's not in that moment, but meeting them where they are and then um, help fostering them to get to that place. Um, I think that's really like my favorite part of being a doula. <laughs> Love that. 
Cool. I think for me, it's a combo pack because it's always, of course, reminding mamas and birthing people of their power, just reminding because mm -hmm. it's in there and they know mm -hmm. it. it's just bringing it back, bringing it out, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but then also just like communing because people yeah. are so beautiful. I love just hearing people, getting to know them, figuring out how to show up for them. And it's just a gift to, um, be in their lives during such a vulnerable and important and special and sacred time. Mm -hmm. mm. That's wonderful. Um, Brittany, you had mentioned certification. Tell me mm -hmm. what kind of training or certification goes into being a doula. Um, so uh, a little, you know, story with me, I'm heavy on education and I am, <laughs> I have um, a health education degree. I have my master's degree in education um, so I'm very passionate when it comes to, you know, me learning for myself, but also being able to share that information, share that knowledge with others. Um, but I know Connecticut, as far as being a doula, Connecticut does not yet have, um, you know, they're working on, you know, certification requirements for being a doula. But when I first started, um, I started with a online program where I did a lot of self-study. Um, I think it was Madrula. I'm blanking on the name right now, so I'm sorry about that. I think it was Madrella um, Doula Network. Um, I started with an online version, you know, kind of just reading, doing a lot of self-study. But in that, I realized that I could teach myself all of these things, but I need to be there. I need hands-on. That's really how you learn. That's really how you get that experience. Um, so I further my education. I found a doula program um, that was based out of um, Connecticut, Earth's Natural Touch, and I wanted to train with them because they had an extensive 14th month training. Um, it was rooted in, you know, Black culture, it was rooted in um, just community work. So I wanted to train, I trained with them, and it was supposed to be in person, but then 2020 happened. So once again, like I said, that really changed its trajectory, and it was still, um, you know, we did virtual um, support. We did virtual learning again. So I was like, you know, that's great. I did my ver my 14 months. I did my training, but I still need hands on. I still need more. Um, and although I did support families, um, you know, in that space, like I was able to support Shannon and be at her birth. Um, it's still I still need it more. <laughs> so um, recently I just obtained um, my certification through Dona um, and that was an in person and it was um I was in person. I traveled to North Carolina um, to be taught by a black woman. Um, and it was a great it was a great training. Um, she really had um, just gave that full. It was just a full knowledge of the history of, um, you know, black birth in America, the changes in, you know, each century and just really gave us like a great foundation um, and knowledge into that. And, and on top of that, the knowledge that was in the room um, also played a role in, you know, just just being in space and being able to learn like Shen as a community and learn people and learn their skills. That was where, you know, I it was able to have that in-person hands-on training. Um, so for me, you know, my journey is a little different. I received three different types of doula training because I'm passionate about education. I'm passionate about really learning. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like, you know, that process there, um, you know, as far as becoming um, a certified doula and, you know, having my births and reading my books and, you know, recording these experiences um, so that I can um, be certified. Um, and yeah, that's kind of like my journey as a doula certification, but I know Shannon, you have a, you train differently. So I don't know if you want to share on that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah so I trained at um, down in South Florida with Southern Birth Justice Network. Um, we did an in-person three-day intensive training where we learned mm -hmm. like everything. Mm -hmm. There were so many like doulas who have been doing this work forever. Midwives, um, Jamar Amani was there. She like, you know, is one of the founders of SPJN. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they taught us so much. Uh, but the hands-on aspect of it is, is learning it face-to-face -face makes such a big difference because that was like seven years ago and I still remember these skills. So I'm yeah. very grateful for that training. And then after the three day training, we had a year of um, like we had to do births with our mentor. Yeah. Uh, we did 
three births with the mentor, three births without our mentor, and then kind of gone from there. And they supported with like business and how to conduct business well, policy, like how to navigate the birth world. Um, mm-hmm. It's a really great program. I highly recommend it. They're still doing great things. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a great. And I, I love SPJM because they're very inclusive, inclusive as well. Like, um, well, it is a different environment, different feel. So like uh, we're they're very trans friendly and, and like even our material, everything is like birthing person. Like it was very I love it. I love everything about that. Uh, May marks the start of Maternal Mental Health Awareness Month. Tell me what that sort of means to both of you. And, and have you come across women who have been depressed pre-birth and post-birth with postpartum? The clients I had that experienced birth, it always starts with depletion. I always, I want to throw that out yeah. there because mm-hmm. if your needs aren't met. Your basic needs are not met. You haven't took a take a shower. You don't know what you're going to eat. Like I think understanding that it shows up differently for everyone, and that um, you know the way that mental health, um, you know, our mental health since you know COVID and being in that um, you know that isolation stage, a lot of times it really means that we need to come together more. We need to speak more on and no longer silencing or keeping things quiet, but talking more. And when we talk more about our experiences, that really allows us to really build that community, build that village, build that connection um, and realize that we're not alone and we don't need to isolate. Um, And it also means to me, it's really understanding. um, Like I said, it shows up differently for everyone, how signs may mirror each other. If you're, you know, how the pre-existing conditions can, you know, also prelude um, to mental health. So just having that knowledge um, that it can show up differently for individuals um, and just being able for us to really talk about that and hold space for each other. um, Yeah, that's just bring awareness and having that access to and having that space. Um, that's really important to me as like, you know, we moving into May um, and bring awareness to the maternal mental health. When you're a couple, it's hard enough. What kind of barriers do single moms face? Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> it's a loaded one. <laughs> it's so it's many. Loaded. Yeah, because um, we have to literally do everything, yeah. everything that the... <laughs> It's... Taking care of baby. Mm-hmm. We got, you know, feed, diapering, make mm-hmm. sure they're resting well, make sure they're safe, everything. And then ourselves while also holding baby, doing everything you got to do while also holding baby, mm-hmm. getting around. Um, there's just everything. There's so many things that we have to navigate. Okay. And then it's a heavy mental load. There's no breaks, literally, no mental breaks. It's, it's, even when your baby, if you were to have somebody watch your child, you have that that luxury. You're thinking about that child. <laughs> like it's mm-hmm. just, mm-hmm. it's uh, yeah. I have to. I should have thought about that one in advance because it's a know. it's a big one. But yeah. uh, you know, I, being that you are a single mom, do you have people who come and help you? And does does a doula help you in that transition from birth and and moving forward? Like if you were in a postpartum situation. Does a doula mm-hmm. help in that aspect? They can. Mm-hmm. It, it yes, really they can. depends on the doula you're working with. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Sure, help me because I was. That's <laughs> how <laughs> we built this bond. Yes. I think, um, one thing I'd love to say is like, it, I really want families to learn how to be in relationship with pregnant and postpartum women again. There's a lot of unhealthy dynamics and folks need to really understand how vulnerable yes. we are at, at mm-hmm. that during these times. It's not the same person anymore. You have like you would treat that baby, treat that mama. Like mm-hmm. be very careful, loving, delicate, pour into that mama and that birthing person. Yeah. Uh, for me, I had I had housing and I had food for my mm-hmm. family. And I and I have so much gratitude for that because you know they didn't really have to do that so mm-hmm. but as far as everything else goes i had britney <laughs> for mental support I had, I had britney and my therapist shout out to my therapist at quality counseling wouldn't have made it without britney and my therapist mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> and that's so important right like getting that mental health that you need i know a doula can sit and talk to you and be supportive of you but actually getting the mental health 
professional that you need. That's important. And do you offer mm-hmm. that to mamas? Like, do you, as a doula, say, hey, I can help you, you know, I can listen to you and I can help you. But if you're finding that they're in a place where you can't help them, do you offer services or do you have therapists that you can offer to them? Yes, we do. Um, mm-hmm. We always refer out for to quality counseling for sure. They're mm-hmm. in Hamden. They accept Husky. They mm-hmm. do in-person and virtual support. And then also there's new chapter counseling services. They're in Bloomfield. They accept Husky and they're in, uh, they also have virtual sessions as well. Great practices. I've spoken to the therapist. Like, like I have built a relationship and can trust to send mamas and birthing people their way. Well, there's mm-hmm. stigma yeah. around maternal mental health in the Black community. How can we yeah. help that stigma go away? And do you have any part in that? I think it's talking about it. I was going to say, talk about it. We got to yes, talk about, talk it. about mm-hmm. it. And anytime that like I'll hear somebody speak about it poorly or try to shame or blame or make anybody feel any kind of way, I check them. No, mm-hmm. we're not going to do that here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Actually, you know, like I provide facts and feedback because we all deserve to heal. And like if we're having a hard time, shame and all the slander isn't going to help us do that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. A study from the National Library of Medicine said that doula guidance in perinatal care was associated with positive delivery outcomes, including reduced C-sections, premature deliveries, and length of labor. And the emotional support provided by doulas was seen to reduce anxiety and stress. And doula support specifically in low-income women was shown to improve breastfeeding success with quicker Mm -hmm. lactogenesis and continued breastfeeding weeks after childbirth, which I know Mm -hmm. can be really tough. That's a really tough one. And I know you guys help with that. And Mm -hmm. the study went on to say that doulas can be a great resource for birthing mothers and consideration should be given to using them more as they may have a positive impact on the well-being of the mother and the child. And um, they also raised questions about the accessibility of doulas and how they may help mitigate health disparities among women from different socioeconomic levels. And when you hear that study from the National Library of Medicine, I mean, that must really feel great and validate exactly what you are doing. Very affirming, yes. And it goes back to, you know, just one thing that, you know, as doulas, being holistic doulas is important for us to um, who's on your team? We ask our moms, who's on your, what's your support look like? What is your support team? And a part of that, you know, is having the mental health support, the nutrition, the spiritual, the intellectual, um, you know, having all of that entire, um, you know, that entire dimension of wellness, that entire circle of care be rooted in with the, the mom is the, or the family in the middle. Um, but just having that team is really important. And that is why those that study can it's affirming because it's it, it's one of our values to make sure that the family is the center and that team is surrounding them and having those conversations so that we can start developing that team and you can start seeing you know who is going to be supportive of you who is going to meet you where you are and you know having those boundaries and and yeah that that yeah it's really affirming to hear that because that's what you know we stand on as holistic doulas to ensure that One of the great things that you mentioned was teamwork, caregivers, like coming to help single moms like you had to deal with, Shannon. Another thing about Connecticut paid leave is we do the caregiver leave. So it doesn't matter what your family looks like and it doesn't have to be blood related. It can be related by affinity. So if your best friend is like your sister, like your best friend can take up to 12 weeks of income replacement and help you. And I think that that's a beautiful thing for someone who is a single mom. And where is the help that you need? If a family member is concerned about someone who's having or had a baby, what are some of the signs that that maybe a family member or their team should be looking for that maybe um, you haven't seen? What what should they look at for signs of maternal mental health issues? If you see them preferring isolation, um, things like that, it, it really depends on their personality type, like who they were before and after. You want to pay attention if there's like major shifts, mm-hmm. yeah. um, if they're not eating. Um there's the sleep deprivation kicks everybody's butt Mm -hmm, Uh, mm -hmm. but when you notice if they're experiencing psychosis or saying they're seeing or like hearing things and 
you definitely want to watch out for that. There's anxiety. There's the sleeping a lot. There's the not either not wanting to hold the baby. There's the paranoia. Um, you know, change in appetite, not wanting to eat, excessive worry. Um, you know, having su either suicide, suicidal thoughts, mm -hmm. or you know, thoughts or harming of harming, the baby. yeah, harming the baby, sure. harming yourself. Mm. You know, feeling guilt. Guilt is a, a huge one. Um, you know that we see a lot of our moms talk about not wanting to leave their baby or wanting to take care of themselves, but feeling guilty for wanting to take care of themselves. These are all like just little mm -hmm. signs or major signs that you know as the people that know um you know the the family and being able to be aware of those um it's really important for um you know us to just be uh, aware of that and us also like i said before it shows up differently for everyone mm -hmm. um you know and if it's someone that was highly active before and now they just have loss of interest in things or they're just you know so it's really important and that's why you know as a doula it's, I always say, we don't come to replace anyone in the family. We are not replacements. We come to complement. It's important that you have, or you know, um, you have someone that knows you, um, you know, having that, that, that relationship before. And, and so that we can learn from the people that know you also learning from the mom and the family who they are and combining the two so that we can make sure we are really encompassing the 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 support that it's actually needing and having those needs met um so yeah it's it's very important that we all that teamwork you know we're we're all here to work as a team to just really provide that support for the family um i stay with my clients at least three months after one i lived with for a little while and actually supported wow um, yeah it was really fun i was happy to be there for it um but we stay in touch um we have like all Facebook friends and a lot of people run their practices different, but I stay in touch with my clients. How do you mm -hmm. think a program like Connecticut Paid Leave can help your clients who might be going through some emotional troubles after birth? Just learning that the time is there for them. Yeah. Um, that alone is everything. It can make the biggest difference from somebody like being in stuck in situations they do not need to be in to being able to get, you know, ahead in life. <laughs> um, and then, it's, yeah, I love the program. All the things I'm learning about it, it's just, it really honors mamas and families. It centers them in their needs and it's, it's such a gift. Yes, okay. So yes, just having the um, the option there, have like Cher said, having that option there um, to just relieve that pressure, relieve that, how am I going to work or I have to get back or, you know, and also it allows, I think it's great for one, knowing that option, but then also being able to prepare, um, you know, prepare for the time that you'll have off, um, you know, being able to really be present and not worry about your work, not worry about your responsibilities, but worry about just you being a parent and you bonding with your baby, learning yourself as a new mom, as a new dad, just having that. Um, I think it's great. I think it is um I mean, I know that Connecticut, we have one of the, um, we have one of those longer, I think, it, what is it, 12 weeks? Yeah, 12 weeks. 12 weeks, And yeah. if there's so, complications, you get 14 weeks. You'll get an extra yeah. two weeks if there's complications. Yeah, so yeah, just being able to have that option, I think is beautiful. Um, and I think it really allows parents to just be present with their baby, with their, like, you know, and just with their family and um, being able to navigate that. It takes that mental load off, yeah. Just, I mean, as it just takes that mental load off of not having to, because, you know, sometimes as women will, we take on a lot of things. We take on a lot of responsibilities and, you know, not only are we the, the mom, but we're also sometimes a therapist. Sometimes we're the coordinator. Sometimes we're the, the analysts and our brains are always going and always going. So mentally it's just stop, be present, <laughs> be where you are, be with your baby, be with your family. Well, thank you, Shannon and Brittany, the founders of Golden Radiance Village, for all this wonderful information. And thank you so much for coming on the Paid Leave podcast. Yes, of course. Thank, thank you for having us. For more information, you can go to ctpaidleave.org. This has been another edition of the Paid Leave podcast. Please like and subscribe so you'll be notified about new podcasts that become available. Connecticut Paid Leave is a public act with a personal purpose. I'm Nancy Barrow. And thanks for listening.